In 2018, a friend said that the Lord Jesus had returned and he was expressing truths to do the work of judgment beginning with God's house. I read Almighty God's words and saw that they're the truth and it was the voice of God. I knew that Almighty God is the Lord Jesus returned, so I accepted his work of the last days and started to attend online gatherings. That's Thanks wonderful. be to God. I was totally immersed in the joy of welcoming the Lord. Unexpectedly, a spiritual battle at home would unfold. A few months after that, my husband sent me a message that said, you haven't been going to church lately, and what's that book you're always reading? What do you guys talk about in those online gatherings? I just accepted God's work of the last days, so I didn't think I could explain it clearly, but then I figured, my husband's always been a believer, and he's a church co-worker, so I should share with him the news of the Lord's return. Yes. So I told him, we're in the last days and the prophecies of the Lord's return have been fulfilled. He's returned as Almighty God and appeared in the flesh. He's doing the work of judgment through words to cleanse mankind. That book is of Almighty God's words. It reveals many mysteries about the Bible. I've caught up with God's new work and I'm meeting with members of the Church of Almighty God. Of course, I'm not going to services at the old church. You should read Almighty God's words and see for yourself. So then I also sent him a link to the church's website. Did he open it? Yeah, did he? Surprisingly, he sent me a whole lot of lies that were being spread by the CCP online to slander the Church of Almighty God, including the fake Zhao Yuan case the Communist Party planted on the church. I figured that since my husband was Filipino, he didn't know about the fake news there is in China, so he was easily taken in by it. Of course. So I said in response, the Zhao Yuan case was tried in a CCP court. All CCP courts are just tools for the government to maintain its dictatorship. Yes. Their trials and judgments have no credibility at all. The CCP has fabricated so many false cases, like the protest at Tiananmen Square shocking the world and the crackdown on the Tibetan protests. First they concoct the lies, distort the facts and make false charges, and then they use violent suppression. That's mm -hmm. just what they do. It is. Yes. That's always been their tactic, to weed out dissent. Besides, it's an atheistic party. They've brutally persecuted religious beliefs since coming to power. How could we put stock in their condemnation of a church? Yeah. In fact, Western scholars conducted independent investigations that uncovered their lies. After that, I sent him a video of the Italian scholar Professor Massimo Introvigne delivering a speech at a conference about religion. I told him, you'll understand the truth after watching the video. A Zhao Yuan defendant said in court, I never had contact with the Church of Almighty God. They themselves admitted that they're not with the Church, and the Church doesn't acknowledge them either. It's, it's true. true. Clearly, they have no affiliation with the Church of Almighty God. But it was the court who insisted that they were members of the Church. They knowingly distorted the facts and framed a case to discredit the Church. Mm -hmm. Yes. This shows us that the Zhao Yuan case was concocted by the CCP as an excuse to persecute the Christians. It's their usual tactic to crack down on religious beliefs. Right. My husband was thoroughly convinced by these lies, and he just wouldn't listen to me. After that, he started trying to stand in the way of my faith, installing security cameras in our home so he could watch my every move. He went that far? No kidding. One evening, he saw me on camera in a gathering and he burst in and started yelling, asking why I was still attending these gatherings. I said, this is the US, a country with freedom of belief. This is protected by the law. Practicing my faith is a proper thing, so why would you stand in my way? Almighty God's gospel of the last days has spread to many Western countries. There are many people like Mr. and Mrs. Schmidt from Arizona, Tina and Charlie, who have been interviewed about their experiences of accepting Almighty God's work of the last days. There are testimonies from Canada, Cuba, Japan, France, Russia, Thailand, 
and lots of other countries. People from all over the world who long for the Lord's return have come before Almighty God and have accepted His work. Why don't you see what His work achieves and if it's the voice of God, instead of blindly falling for the atheistic CCP's lies? Exactly. He just wouldn't listen to me. And then he grabbed my phone. Trying to block him, I reached out and hid his arm. To my horror, he used this as an excuse to report me to the police. That's going too far. How could he do that to you? Smiling coldly, he said, but don't you have your God? Call him for help. The police will be here soon. Let's see who can save you tonight. I was absolutely furious and a little afraid too. Afraid of being taken away by the police like so many others in China. Then I remembered these words from God. Man's heart and spirit are held in the hand of God. Everything of his life is beheld in the eyes of God. Regardless of whether or not you believe this, any and all things, whether living or dead, will shift, change, renew, and disappear in accordance with God's thoughts. Such is the way in which God presides over all things. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. All things really are in God's hands, and He has the final say. So whether the police took me away that day was entirely up to God. If God allowed that, that would be His will, and I'd submit. After saying my prayer, I felt much less panicked. Thanks be to God. The police arrived five minutes later, and once they got a sense of the situation, they were very understanding. One of the officers, a white man, said he spent time in China, and he knew about the government's persecution of religious beliefs. After our conversation, the officer said to my husband, In the U.S., we have freedom of religion. You don't have the right to interfere in your wife's faith. At this he responded, she can have faith, but she can't join online gatherings at home. Then the officer warned him again. She is your wife and a member of this household. She has the right to attend gatherings at home. This is protected by the law. You can't stop her from attending gatherings, and doing so would violate U.S. law. Thanks be to God. God opened up a path for her. Yeah. yeah. After the police left, I thought about what had happened and just couldn't believe it. We'd been through so much together over the years, but he used my faith in Almighty God as an excuse to call the police on me. My husband was not the same. He had no humanity. I also knew that, in spite of what I'd gone through, God was always by my side, protecting me. I felt very grateful to God, and my resolve to follow Him grew stronger. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Amen. Since I was resolved to keep my faith, my husband took away all of our shared bank cards, keys to our shop, the car keys, and all the cash I had. Throughout the entirety of our marriage, I had been the one to manage our finances and our business. But now he was taking it all away from me. He then canceled our internet so I couldn't attend online gatherings and locked the door to our bedroom so I couldn't get in. He also became colder and colder toward me. If I'd ask him where he was going, he'd curtly say something like, don't you meddle in my business. You have no right to ask me that. If you want to believe in Almighty God, you can get out of this house and make your own way. You can't work in the store anymore. I'll call the police if I find you anywhere near it. That's vicious. He also barraged our friends with all those lies online, and some of them kept coming to our house, insisting I give up. Our once peaceful life was torn to shreds. I thought about how, for our life together, I'd given up my career to go into business with my husband, which is what allowed us to have our store in this city. But faced with the choice between faith and family, I really didn't know what I should do next. I felt so weak. I didn't get it. Don't believers long for the Lord's return? I'd welcomed the Lord and embarked on the right path. So then why didn't anyone understand? 
As I thought through it all, I couldn't stop my tears. Then I thought of some of God's words. I'll read them now. Okay. okay. What you have now inherited surpasses that of all past apostles and prophets and is greater even than that of Moses and Peter. Blessings cannot be gained in a day or two, but through great sacrifice. You must possess a refined love and great faith and the many truths God requires you to attain. You must also turn unswervingly toward justice and your love for God must be unabating. You must have resolve. Amen. 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 Thanks be to God. God's words gave me strength, and I saw that what He wants is people's faith and love, and for us to never stray from Him, no matter what difficulties we face. Being lucky enough to hear God's voice and welcome, the Lord's return in the last days was the love of God. Suffering in order to follow Christ has value and meaning, and it's for the sake of righteousness. Amen. Amen. I thought of the disciples who followed Lord Jesus. They were brutally persecuted by the Romans and condemned by religious leaders. Some were martyred for the Lord. They suffered a lot, but the Lord, of course, remembered them. I realized I shouldn't be upset for being persecuted, for following God, but should learn from generations of saints and follow God till the end in the face of any hardship. Amen. 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 There's value in that suffering. That's right. I read some more words of God after that that I'd like to share now. All right. In every step of work that God does within people, externally it appears to be interactions between people, as if born of human arrangements or from human interference. But behind the scenes, every step of work is a wager made by Satan before God, requiring people to stand testimony for God. Take when Job was tried, for example. Behind the scenes, Satan was making a bet with God. What happened to Job was the deeds and interference of men. Behind every step of work that God does in you is Satan's wager with God. Behind it all is a battle. When God and Satan do battle in the spiritual realm, how should you satisfy God and stand testimony for him? You should know that everything that happens to you is a great trial and the time when God needs you to bear testimony. Amen. 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 After accepting the true way and following God's new work, it looked like it was my husband standing in my way and being oppressive. But in the spiritual world, a battle was being waged. Satan was using my husband to interfere with me exploiting my feelings for my husband and my personal interest to intimidate me into giving up the true way and giving in to Satan. That's true. So I'd ultimately betray God. It was one of Satan's tricks. Yes. At the same time, God was using this situation to show the evil side of my husband opposing God. When he delivered sermons in the church, he preached tolerance and told us to keep watch for the Lord's coming. But with the work of the Lord's return, he didn't look into it at all and treated me like an enemy. It wasn't me he hated. It was God he hated and opposed. He was a non-believer through and through. Yes. 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 Thinking about his actions, I didn't feel hurt anymore. I just felt really angry. We were husband and wife, but we were on very different paths. He couldn't rein me in anymore. The more oppressive he was, the more I'd follow God, stand witness and shame Satan. Amen. Amen. Thanks Thanks be to to God. God. Not only did I follow God, but I also wanted to share God's gospel of the last days with more true believers. Amen. It's that thought that gave me the strength I needed to get through those hard times. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. And in no time, I was able to find a new job at a market near the house, so I worked there and shared the gospel. Although the job was hard work, God's words guided me through it, And I felt very at ease. Thanks be to God. But my husband wouldn't stop. To stop me from believing, he stole the bicycle I used to get to work. 
forbidding me to work there. He also sent some customers to my workplace to urge me to give up my faith. Not only that, at the church he spread lies about me, saying I abandoned family for faith. When my boss found out about it, she treated me differently and then fired me. That's when my mother-in-law in the Philippines passed away. My husband had to go. He had no choice but to leave me my phone and the keys to the shop. When he got back to the U.S., his attitude toward me had softened a lot. He wasn't so opposed to me joining online gatherings anymore. I thought that maybe he'd changed. But then one day, he found out that I'd shared the gospel of God's last day's work with a sister at his church, and he went behind my back to get in touch with her through the pastor. He told her all kinds of lies, and she believed him so she wouldn't have anything to do with me. And then he warned me, I can't stop you from believing in Almighty God, but I won't allow you to take people from my church. You're not welcome there anymore. And you can't bring your phone into our shop. If you read their messages or answer their calls again, then I will kick you out. His behavior was shocking and incredibly infuriating. Over those few months, I had been so patient with him and I'd tried to move him with how I lived. It should have had an impact on him to change his attitude toward me and God's work. I never thought that my husband would be so stubborn and malicious. He showed a false face to the world. He didn't share my faith and he kept me from sharing it with others, shamelessly claiming ownership over brothers and sisters, brazenly trying to usurp God's sheep. Yes. God's sheep hear God's voice and return to his house. That's right and natural. And faith is a thing that's free. But he was working with the pastor to do anything possible to disrupt brothers and sisters. He spread lies to mislead people so they wouldn't dare listen to God's gospel of the last days. He was suffocating and also starving the church, ruining people's chance at salvation. Absolutely. That's truly it evil. It made me think of the Lord Jesus rebuking the Pharisees. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer you them that are entering to go in. Amen. Now I will read Almighty God's words. Okay. There are those who read the Bible in grand churches and recite it all day long. Yet not one among them understands the purpose of God's work. None of them can know God. Less still can any of them accord with His will. They are all worthless, vile people, each standing on high to lecture God. They willfully oppose God even as they carry His banner. Claiming faith in God, still they eat the flesh and drink the blood of man. All such people are devils that devour the soul of man. Head demons that intentionally disrupt people from stepping onto the right path, and stumbling blocks impeding those who seek God. They may appear of sound constitution, but how are their followers to know that they are none other than antichrists who lead people to stand against God? How could their followers know that they are demons, devourers of human souls? Amen. Amen. It's true. If I hadn't witnessed those words, and actions of my husband, I never could have imagined that someone who helped to organize charitable events, who seemed so devout and was admired, would not only refuse to look into or accept the work of the Lord's coming, but would spread lies throughout the church, deceptively keeping others from turning towards God. How is he different from the Pharisees who nailed Lord Jesus to the cross 2,000 years ago? She's right. It's exactly the same thing. True. They're real antichrists, devils that devour people's souls. Right. I saw the truth of my husband's essence, that he was an incorrigible demon. Yes. Believers and unbelievers just aren't compatible. I couldn't be held back by him anymore. Thinking this through, I decided that I'd devote more time to my faith and pursuit of the truth, and I would follow Almighty God no matter how my husband treated me. Right. Amen. 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 Thanks be to God. Then one day, he got a divorce lawyer to initiate divorce proceedings, and he demanded I move out within a month. 
I felt really powerless. I didn't know where I would live. Would I become a vagrant? <sighs> he also canceled our home internet connection once again in an effort to cut my contact with brothers and sisters. I had no choice but to go out all the time using public connections to attend gatherings. My life was in crisis. Without an income, my basic needs would become an issue. I had never been through those kinds of hard times, and I had no idea how I'd possibly get by. I was left feeling really lost and in pain. When a sister found out what happened, she sent me a passage of God's words. I'd like to read it now. Great, great. While undergoing trials, it is normal for people to be weak or to have negativity within them or to lack clarity on God's will or their path for practice. But in any case, you must have faith in God's work and not deny God just like Job. In your experience, no matter what refinement you undergo through God's words, what God requires of mankind in brief is their faith and their love for Him. What He perfects by working in this way is people's faith, love, and aspirations. Amen. 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 Thanks be to God. After reading this, I realized that my husband threatening me with divorce was something God was allowing. When Job went through his trials, robbers took everything he had and his children lost their lives and he was covered with boils and sat in ashes. Rejecting him, his wife asked him to give up his faith and die. His friends judged and mocked him. In the face of these trials and suffering, Job still praised God. Jehovah gave and Jehovah has taken away. Blessed be the name of Jehovah. This is true faith. Amen. Amen. I had once made a solemn vow before God that no matter what, I would keep following God. But faced with my husband's threats endangering my own living, I felt stuck in negativity and pain. I saw I didn't have true faith in God. My husband was threatening me with divorce to get me to betray and forsake God. I couldn't fall prey to Satan's scheme. That's right, yes. yes. No matter what kind of trials I faced, I knew I had to follow God, stand witness, and bring shame to Satan. Amen. 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 Thanks be to God. A few days later, I found another job, so I was able to buy internet access to attend gatherings and perform my duty. Wonderful. I felt so much better. Later on, I calmly signed my name on the divorce papers and gained freedom from my husband's restrictions. I could freely practice my faith. That's wonderful. wonderful. I continued to perform my duty and share the gospel. Even though my finances were tighter than before, I could do my duty free from worry. I had a sense of joy and peace. And I felt that following God and taking the right path is the most meaningful way to live. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. I thank God for allowing me to stand witness through this spiritual battle on the home front. Thanks be to thank God. God. You can believe in God freely. Yeah.